What's going on? What's going on? Brutus here, bringing you another up and coming video, long overdue, uh, where we discuss basically, um, you know, the lower le lower level uh, royals, uh, still doing all the same things uh, that you see all over the place on the high end of war spectrums and things like that. Just um, you know, like ten teen royals as well as brand new town all tens and stuff like that. So to start this off, we have our first ever ten v ten for Shanks. And uh, given the plan, he um, wasn't very confident. This is his first ever uh, 10v10, so I had to make sure that we uh, caught it. But he wasn't very confident with it, and I uh, had explained to him that um, this is probably a good way to, to get your feet wet and don't be nervous. Um, but he's going to do a queen walk on the outside here, which is very good because um, it'll never engage a Hongloon CC. Uh, and looking at the defenses, uh, she will only encounter... Um, <clears throat> one point defense at a time and he was worried about that but given that you have um, the witches and bowlers distracting a little bit in the core it helps out with some of those uh, defenses and if he did get in trouble just pop the ability and then you'll be fine uh, your queen will last the will last the entire raid so a few which a three just three witches on the right side with a few bowlers uh, to sustain the funnel a little bit on the right for the trash and then the rest just up the gut um, with a double jump and um, the other key to this was to hold on to your uh, BK ability toward as long as possible towards the very end so that you can beat through the wall to try to get to that last infernal and he did a really good job with that uh, given that he had so many bowlers in front of him and of course I believe it was a double golem gets a little bit of luck here where the witch uh, healers switch off to the golem sustain that a little bit more I think he would have been better off having it back on the queen but uh, being how it switched off, it enabled the queen to pick off the air defense. So now his healers stay up the entire time and start working on his BK before it starts to get under an infernal tower. Meanwhile, just two witches on the outside uh, are really catching up. No splash over there. So um, He was able to hold that ability really long. Really nice patience there. Popped it at the last part to beat through this wall to get that last infernal tower. Uh, meanwhile, there's not very much late remaining on the back end. We'll go to times two. Really nice execution, man. Good job for being your uh, first uh, time. All right, let's back out of here and go down into some... Um, what is it? Actually, actually, I wanted to show one more. This is not Shim. Conan. I call him Conan. This is his first ever 10v11. Uh, and he wasn't very confident on this as well. And we had talked through why this works uh, using the principles of a, of a go for um, Gobo. Um, but he was worried and people were thinking like, no, you need 40-40 in order to do this on um, max point defense. Well, this isn't, you know, post update, it's not max. But though before the update, these are Town Hall 11 defenses. So uh, bows and everything. And he wasn't very confident with it. He kind of laughed and he said, it looks scary. But, you know, you shouldn't be scared of the point defenses because, um, because of your royals. And I explained to him that, remember, my rushed Brutus account uh, was able to, to three-star Dark Looters base that was max 11. And I had 2025. 20, That's on the channel. And, and so with that vote of confidence, uh, we drew up the plan. And then uh, leaning on the power of your max troops for Town Hall 10 at that level, not obviously max bowlers, but having the same firepower as anybody else would with uh, max royals, um, 33-35, it shouldn't be a, a deal breaker for you. Uh, so he really executed this great go for uh, double jump gobo with four golems. Um, really nice. Uh, we, we talked through the, the, the reasons why to it, but I know that this was also one of his first... Uh, and I wanted to put it on this in this format to prove to people that don't have 40-40 um, that it's not so much your royals that enable you to uh, uh, do this to a 10v11. It's actually your uh, your plan and then the troops itself, the, your max golems and your level 2 bowlers. And I know you guys can get that easily. So nice job there, Conan. <laughs> I don't, I, it's probably Zonan, but I, I call him Conan. Uh, let's look at number 19 with some teen royals doing a um, witch attack, a slap attack, witch slap. And some people had been uh, commenting like, oh, do you need high royal f royals for this? Um, this is proof that you don't. So again, the, 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 the bowler witch attack at Town Hall 10, as well as the witch slap down here at Town Hall 9, 
don't really require heavily on your on max royals as as much as the, the it's the strategy itself and the troops that are more commonly everyone can uh, share. The, the bowlers out of the CC, almost everybody gets that at Town Hall 9. And then level 2, which is, I granted, I would love to see if this was a level 1. I uh, don't think it would have made a difference, though, as you can see how it transpires. But really just execution of the same strategy with loyal, lawyer, God, lower royal levels uh, can have similar results. Is really what is illustrated in the up-and-coming video as we see Sin uh, doing this here. Um, I'll have another one for him doing a Lalo attack. We'll go to times two because we've all seen a witch slap. Um, again, the firepower, not so much from his level 10 uh, queen as much as it is from the rage bowlers in the core behind just a level two golem too, not even a level four golem. Um, so really nice illustration about just how po po overpowering the uh, witches can be with healers behind them on the sides. Nice use of that skeleton spell at 9 o'clock to clean up the left side. There's just so many freaking Larrys. His royals are done, but they're with uh, not any splash remaining. Uh, and they still have healers up behind his witch and just a wad of Larrys. Um, it's, it's just... There you go. If you guys are wondering if you... Um, uh, claiming that you can't do this without heavy royals, it's, there's proof that it's the strategy itself. Nice job, Sin. All right, let's back out of this, go into a different war, and then we'll call this a video. Uh, where are we at? Um, here it is. A Zap Quake um, Queen Pop. So 10-10. Decides to go for the air defense uh, near the queen, although he still has another one to anchor her. And then the bomb tower is nowhere near her, so that's where you come in with the pups at the very uh, on the back end that just overwhelm her. Gets the CC out with a loon lure, textbook stuff. Notice how he uh, positioned his royals to get the witch before he got the Larrys. And then doesn't wait or watch his BK once the ability is used. Just starts the Lalo. Sacrificial loons on the bottom for t uh, pathing purposes. Stu has another, uh, keeps one loon for the back end as he has three hounds, two of them popping as they come in, soaking up two more black sams. There's the fourth one popping, or thir I'm sorry, third one popping. Queen is Stu fixated on it. Stu another hound there. There's the pups that should, there at the very end, they're all enraged. Once this um, gold mine goes down, you can see. Uh, gold storage goes down. You'll see how they all swarm upon her. He has so many loons left over that it's okay that he, he loses them because you can watch what happens here as these last few pups will catch up and get onto the queen. Just nice job. A good illustration of just how OP that strat can be. Stu got pups all over the place too, so it's not like he was uh, starving on the time. And then I think I have one more for this. Let's bounce out. It's, uh, I, there was one more. That, oh, na, yeah, 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 the cat. Maybe even one more after that. So we have 13-15 uh, versus, um, this is with the bows in, involved here. You got level two bows in the, in the core. So the cat with, um, with a lot of time with level four golems. You know, he's got a maxed uh, laboratory for Town Hall 9, just Team Royals. But he's gonna uh, get a funnel going on here, and then of course the CC bowlers, the rage, the jump. Aiming for uh, a minimum of three air defenses, as you can see the angle that he's taken. 
And then that'll leave him one back in uh, Hound and at least uh, four, uh, 15 or 14 loons for that. Bowler's doing work in the core. It's a great way to uh, substitute a low firepowering queen uh, just by adding bullish to that. As she gets landlocked at the very back, um, is not going to be able to get out and get that last air defense. But now that she's taken out the uh, wizard tower with the ability, she more than likely still will eat through this wall and get a few shots onto the um, uh, last air defense by the time that the loons get there. <clears throat> Go to times two, because I definitely want to show you one more. Once the splash damage goes down, he kind of he aims his last few loons at any air targeting defenses. And then of course he's got clean up pups behind him and a wizard behind him. Just nice job, man. By adding firepower to your kill squad, just by adding bowlers. <laughs> Makes that level 15 queen feel like level 30 going through stuff. Uh, okay, so last one here was another uh, 10 v 11. And this one was 30-31. So kind of like how we started with uh, non-40-40 hitting max Town Hall 11 bases for 10 v 11s. Well, I want to end that same way uh, with nostal Nostalgia here, a.k.a. A, a Husk. Using the same techniques, again, using the same techniques that you would uh, with max Royals hitting the same things. Um, it can be done with uh, non-max Royals. Just adhere to the same principles some smaller changes and then uh, uh, you you're more noticeable about the impact of adding rage bowlers are to your kill squad at a lower level queen than you are a high level queen but I would rarely want to walk with a uh, less than 40 queen on a max a point defense town hall 11 trying to double it but uh, you know trusting that his rage will, will still win the battle as he goes through point defenses here um, and maximizing that value he gets a lot for this, which is funny because in a separate video, I'm going to show a level five queen take on level 40 BKs. Nice patience on this. Use, using the rage, you know, uh, when you have a raged queen and healers behind it, um, your queen still stays up if it's a level 40 versus a 30. Um, and the impact that you feel is, is really minute. Because the distance that you travel is still going to be the same regardless if it's a 40 or a 30 for the queen in that rage circle. But uh, really late rage here. Still trying to carve the way for the late uh, Valk dive. You can see how he's going to do that right here. I like that he froze the uh, multi-inferno rather than the single. I mean, clearly, so that the, the Infernal Towers do less damage to all Valks at once. <laughs> uh, but really nice job getting there. Stu has the ability in hand, and then on the, meanwhile on the back end, he's got a baby dragon for the percent that is not covered by you know an air defense or an obvious spot where you put a black, span, uh, black Sam. So really nice job. Again, 30-31 going against Max Town Hall 11s. Uh, doing the same things that you see 40-40s do. So hope you guys enjoyed those raids uh, from the up and coming and the folks over at Ain't No Thing. Uh, once again, it's Brutus reminding you, you're going to be better than a double, and I'll check you next time.